Yes, uh, good morning everybody. Um, it's first Friday of the month and 8.15, so I think we can start. Uh, welcome back to our monthly webinar, Go Forska Morgan, brought to you by cooperation of Multiconsult and uh, Hydrosen. Once a month, a researcher from Hydrosen presents their recent and relevant research from our industry. And today we have Nirmal Akharia, who focuses on minimizing sediment erosion in Francis turbines and prospect for better design. If you will have any questions during the presentation, please write them to the chat and we will take them after Nirmal is finished presenting. Thank you very much and uh, you can go ahead, Nirmal. Good luck. <coughs> uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Philip? Yes. Yeah. You can hear me. Yeah. Well. Yeah, thank you, Philip, uh, for my nice introduction. Yes, uh, I also feel privileged to present in this forum. My name is Nirmal Achari and I'm from Nepal and uh, I am currently in my final year of my PhD. And uh, the research work, all the research work uh, uh, are being carried out at uh, Water Power Laboratory at NTNU under Professor Olegunar Dalak. And I had also some experimental works done. Uh, those were done at Turbine Testing Lab, Kathmandu University. And I want to thank special for my colleague, Mr. Soros Gautam, who did the experimental works on my behalf because uh, I was unable to travel to Nepal due to this uh, COVID restriction and lockdown. Uh, so yeah, um, I will be, I'm working on the, uh, like in the broad topic, it is like uh, uh, minimizing the sediment erosion in Francis turbine. <sighs> then uh, yeah, let me start my presentation. Uh, talking about the agenda, uh, I will be briefly discussing about the sediment problems in hydropower and uh, what are the key market for industries and uh, uh, because I'm working on the Francis turbine, so what what does exactly uh, sediment erosion does for Francis turbine and which part are eroded and what were the previous researches that were done on this area and uh, and the gap I realized I should work and uh, on the continuation of those previous researches I started to work during my PhD. Yeah, of course the area of interest for that and uh, some recent experiments we conducted at turbine testing lab and uh, the, the proposed model or the results that the preliminary results because I still have many like uh, samples to be analyzed and uh, there are some preliminary results only and uh, some conclusion. So on the right hand side you can see the uh, runner from Trisuli Hydroelectric Project. It is uh, from Nepal and uh, as you can see, if I remember correctly, this uh, turbine was like a uh, end uh, like a repair and it was, uh, this happens during after three hour, uh, three years, I think. So it was beyond repair and it was, it was to be discarded. So this is the, this picture depicts like how severe the erosion problem in the country like Nepal and uh, Southeast Asian country. So this is this runner is now in the turbine testing lab Kathmandu University, and uh, there there have been some researches going on, and uh, th this picture I feel I feel relevant for my uh, presentation, so I put it here. So if, uh, yes, I'm I'm or uh, I'm the like PhD under Hydrosyn project. So uh, as I'm working on sediment handling, uh, I fall directly on the. Uh, work package one hydropower structure and as a mechanical engineer and uh, working in turbines so I feel I'm also in this category so these are the two work packages that I fit in hydrogen and uh, let me uh, uh, let me show you this slide this slide is the hydropower capacity and that is global hydropower capacity and uh, generation so let me move the laser so these are the different regions of the continents uh, like uh, for the uh, blue uh, dark blue circle it is the installed capacity uh, in uh, gigawatt and uh, the um, dark green circle is the estimated generation and as you can see this the faint circle this is the technical potential that is still uh, uh, technical potential for maximum generation and as you can see the different continents uh, as, as you go through this uh, 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 Central Asia and Southeast Asia then you can see that this big circle big green circle that is there's a huge potential of the uh, potential of generation and if you compare Europe it is a bit uh, uh, compared to these continents it's 
place and it's already been explored much of the potential. The, my point is like uh, these regions have so much uh, like potential and uh, we have, uh, I will show you in the next slide, we have the um, prospect of sediment erosion in those areas. Talking about the challenges, this picture I got, uh, this global map of high sediment region, this picture, this was done by uh, PhD, uh, this was adapted by in from the thesis of the one of the PhD and then it, it it shows the global scenario of the erosion like uh, in the Southeast Asia as I mentioned like the most uh, uh, region which are affected by erosion those are Nepal, China, India, Pakistan, Bhutan and Myanmar and because we have the uh, Himalayas and those are the young mountains and uh, those are generated from the glacier or uh, uh, from the Himalayas and uh, those carries debris along with them and so that uh, the rivers in those areas they are uh, like uh, abundant with silt and uh, sand particles similarly for south america they have andes and uh, those chile peru colombia equator bolivia they th those uh, region also have the similar type of problem and uh, in other countries also there is like mexico canada in north america also there are some problem and even in europe we have alps so the, some there are some problems showing in Austria, Italy, and Switzerland of erosion. So uh, this uh, so this this is the global scenario that how sediment erosion is affecting the hydropower and how it is distributed all over the world. So uh, going to the challenges, uh, this picture was uh, uh, obtained from one of the site from Nepal, and uh, so you, you can see like uh, intake area and there is so much erosion. And this picture was relevant because you can see the uh, the, the excavation or dredging of the uh, sand particles. So the the river itself carries so much erosion, and the, whatever be the like how, how whatever good the design of the sand trap or maybe desilting basin, maybe certain particles are settled there, but the smallest particle and those uh, are carried away with the flow of the water. They don't settle, and those are the culprit for the turbines and the hydromechanical components. So this this. Uh, right hand side picture i uh, got this from one of the paper and it is i think it is the, uh, the hydropower from india i don't know exactly it has not it has not been mentioned there but it it shows the uh, it shows the uh, the dredging or excavation that uh, uh, from the dam so before the inlet in the penstock i think so this is the uh, like uh, problem we are facing in those areas and uh, this needs to be addressed because uh, in Nepal, uh, uh, we have we have the potential so much, but uh, we are adopting the turbine that are used for clean water. So uh, the, our our uh, like uh, logic or theory is there should be some researches. There should be the turbine which can adapt or which can be tailor made for sediment erosion problem. So we are adopting the uh, turbine for clean water, and then those might those are like uh, uh, being eroded or those are being discarded after a few years of operation and there is a loss of uh, much revenue and uh, uh, there is much downtime uh, extended downtime so so uh, the research is focused on how can we develop the complete like uh, sediment uh, not complete resistance but still which can accommodate the erosion in a like a positive way or which have minimum effect due to the erosion so that is our goal of uh, goal of study or research so again i'm talking about nepal because i'm from nepal so uh, as i said like nepal alone has huge potential uh, market we we are the small country between india and china and uh, uh, like uh, we have the perennial rivers they are starting from high mountains from the north and that flowing in the south and that that drains to india and these the the sources of this water are of course snowmelt glaciers and rainfall we also have special monsoon season so we got annual uh, rainfall of around 1500 millimeter on average and the, we have only like 3.3 percentage of total technical capacity that we have we, only we have 3.3 percentage of installment installed until now until 2021 out of 42,000 megawatt and we have like 943 megawatt under construction and uh, uh, 3219 megawatt under planning and the government of nepal it has like uh, ambitious plan of uh, reaching i think 25000 uh, megawatt or something in next 10 years so that is the ambitious plan of the government so 
the hydropower development is in rapid phase in Nepal, but uh, the thing is that uh, I can say like 100% of all the hydropowers are there exposed to high silt erosion. I said 100% normally uh, because for the like reservoir type of plant, that might not be correct because it is already settled and it's, there is different phenomena, but maximum, um, the majority of the hydropower in Nepal are runoff river because we have to catch the, uh, because there are perennial rivers flowing from north and all of them, uh, like the hydropowers are located in those rivers and majority of the hydropower in Nepal are runoff river. So in the runoff river, like it is uh, like 100% of those hydropower will be exposed to uh, sediment or silt erosion. So due to that reason, uh, we have like maintenance and reverse, reverse uh, refurbishment needed every year. Each year there is like uh, there are various like forms of maintenance like uh, one is visual inspection or maybe complete removal of the uh, turbine or the hydromechanical parts and uh, welding and uh, so there is the maintenance process going on it has a huge market so my point is like it is still the, uh, a lot of hydropower to be developed in nepal and uh, if nepal is a uh, small country compared to china and india and other other like north uh, southeast and other south american countries still nepal has so much potential so there is a huge market for industries uh, that can uh, like supply the like sediment uh, uh, resistance or sediment uh, friendly turbines and uh, and there is a uh, so that that was my point so a large portion of holes undeveloped hydropower market have high erosion and that represents a large untapped market as well so let me briefly say about how erosion occurs it is a, like basic theory only like erosive wear there are two types of wear during the process of erosion like for the erosive wear and the uh, the particle hits the, the the particle hits the high high velocity particle hits the surface and degrades the surface and for the abrasive wear it is like the hard particle it strikes the so, uh, it strikes the softer uh, softer surface and then and the like it carries away the material away with it like it's seeping or it's, so there are two types of uh, phenomenon going on during the erosion process and there have been some like uh, previous research uh, like uh, these both uh, erosive and uh, abrasive where they increase with the velocity approximately to power of three. So if velocity doubles, then the erosive, the erosion factor is like eight fold. So it is that serious. And uh, the main, the major uh, culprit for this is the size of like around uh, 150 micrometer to 300 micrometer. So those are the sand particles that are most responsible or most uh, uh, like responsible for the erosion and those parts. So yeah, this is uh, like I, I want to show the ripple formation how the erosion is occurring. Then first of all, in the first stage, uh, in, it is the initial stage. Like there is a rolling of the component and then uh, particles. Then it can be like as you can see, there are some ripple over here. I couldn't find the like exact uh, picture of Francis turbine, so I have for analogy, I have put the uh, turbine Pelton uh, like spear needle. So it is the initial stage in which the uh, the material start rolling and then the, there is some serration type of it can this type of uh, uh, like it can be also found in the nature in some like flow in the beach or maybe in the snow there is this type of flow so this is uh, the initial stage for ripple formation and in the intermediate stage it is from the Khimti same hydropower from plant Nepal so in the intermediate stage the it is the slowly chipping away of the material and uh, uh, like uh, the um, the particle is zipping away the material and uh, it is uh, being a bit uh, more uh, vulnerable or the more loss of material and finally this is the final stage this is one of the uh, like uh, from the male hydropower plant from uh, Norway and in the final stage it is degraded and there are like other refurbishments to do so this was at uh, this this uh, like phenomenon was adapted from Karimi uh, and schemed so this is the uh, I want to uh, like show how the erosion is occurring and how the met slowly, the gradually, the uh, like uh, the material is being uh, taken away from the parent material. So this is the process. And uh, talking on what is the main reason behind uh, erosion? So this was the research uh, or, or done earlier in uh, like uh, Nepalese rivers. So they collected the sand from various major rivers of uh, Nepal and then uh, they did the sieve anal analysis and uh, uh, you, as you can see the ma majority like uh, more than 50 percent of uh, uh, of all I, I mean all the rivers have more than 50 percent of quartz content 
and some have more than 60 percent also so so it is uh, like what is quartz material it is the hard material like if we if we talk on the most hardness scale it is the hardness scale that is uh, that uh, that classify the material hardness from 0 to 10 if we say 0 is for like talcum powder and 10 is for diamond and seven the seven is the scale for quartz so the normally the steel material they have the uh, most scale around five so obviously quartz is uh, uh, harder than steel and then uh, when as i say earlier the, due to the abrasive wear when the harder particles strike the softer particle then it will slowly seep away the material and so nepal has like quartz in uh, more than 50 or 60 percent of quartz in almost all rivers so this is the main reason that we can't avoid sediment erosion in nepalese uh, hydropower turbines or uh, turbines runners or, or guide vanes or other hydromechanical components so this was the research done by Kathmandu University few many years back and still it is still relevant for us. So now I want to um, funnel down to the like Francis turbine, how the sediment erosion uh, is causing what is what the sediment erosion is causing Francis turbine. Obviously, yes, it, it the sig sediment causes significant erosion and uh, it reduces in the uh, efficiency and then there is a huge maintenance cost to refurbish and then there might be like if it is severe in the monsoon season we have like high rainfall and, and there is the like high flood and those things in the hydropower and then there might be an undesired shutdown and which can result in the loss uh, of energy production so that is the uh, severe uh, loss for the uh, owner or the company so uh, so this is the guide when this is the guide wind. So as you can see, it is uh, uh, it is after one uh, monsoon season, and it is from Pilangan hydropower plant from India. Uh, so it has been eroded like the uh, it has been eroded in such a way. So uh, this is uh, it is the example from Indian. And then these are the two uh, runner. These are the run. This is the runner outlet from Zimbruk, and uh, the, as you can see in the outlet there, you can see like shark shark bite type of erosion. So this it was eroded and then it it was it has to be sent to the uh, like uh, workshop for maintenance and uh, many things so so this is the severity of the erosion that we are facing and this is the one of the eroded runner from one of the biggest hydropower from nepal put it megawatt its unit and uh, it has been it, it has also a severe problem of erosion uh, so previous researches were uh, focused on there had been quite a lot of resources uh, in water power laboratory at, uh, at NTNU and Kathmandu University in Nepal and other parts of the world also. So the early the previous researches were focusing on the finding out the sediment contents in a river, uh, the material properties and the coating because there have been some experiments on coating and that that has been installed in Nepalese uh, hydropower turbines. They, they have been coated runner also. The efficiency has in uh, the like uh, ero erosion factor has been decreased due to those reasons also and uh, some researchers were were focused on design of the runner blades as I mentioned like uh, uh, erosion is directly uh, relevant uh, like proportional to the velocity so some researchers have tried to change the shape of the runner blades so that there, there, there would be uh, like uh, minimized uh, uh, relative velocity uh, at the outlet of the turbine in that way also some that there is the uh, blade optimization and uh, and, and uh, the latest like a few years back there, there have been two PhD on like leakage, leakage flow through clearance gap on the guide vane turbines because the, the there is the some gap clearance gap between the guide vane and the cover so uh, for the rotation of the guide vane so water escapes through those uh, gap and uh, from that the uh, water containing sediment erosion also escapes and there is uh, like uh, the there is the vortex formation and which hits the directly the uh, the inlet of the runner so this has been done and this, there has been some design of the guide vanes also that uh, there, there was one research uh, uh, claiming that uh, if we have like asymmetrical type of guide vane then that can and that can minimize the erosion to some extent so this these were the previous research and and uh, with this background i uh, as I said, like leakage, these the the as you can see the area one and two. These are the two regions where the leakage flow leakage flow from the clearance gap is directly and in the inlet. And these are the re these are the reasons due to the leakage flow. But these reasons like three and four, I'm focusing on these reasons how why the sediment erosion is occurring in these areas. 
and there is still another like uh, area which needs to be explored that labyrinth seal area like there is also erosion in those areas so these are the like unexplored area until now so i was i i focused my work on area three three and four and uh, try to uh, make some simple experimental setup to emulate this area and uh, get some uh, like light what what's happening in those areas uh, so the reason of interest as you can see here it is the clearance reason between stationary and rotary components it, because there is a certain gap between stationary and rotary components and they are they have the like different level in, during the orientation or the installation uh, there is the level difference between guide vane and the runner runner vane and so i'm focusing on this area like uh, as, as you can see my uh, cursor so in this area this is the gap i'm playing with and try to emulate this gap uh, for experimental setup and uh, 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 get the like erosion model. I'm trying to gain the erosion model from this. So this is the uh, the cross section for one of the reference case I'm working, and uh, and this uh, as I said like sediment can enter through these gaps and uh, erode the parent parent mantle in the circumferential circumferential way. So experimental setup. This is the experimental setup. Like it is uh, the rotating disc apparatus. It was available uh, uh, at Kathmandu University and a few. Uh, like uh, experiments were done previous in this setup, but for our setup, we had to refurbish the setup and uh, customize the setup. And uh, basically it is like we have, uh, uh, this is the setup and we have the rotating disc. We have the disc inside, we have the disc inside. And uh, in this disc, uh, we have, uh, we put the sample in this way, like a specimen. Uh, I will, I will uh, discuss later that how this specimen is mounted. So it is mounted over here. And then there is the plexiglass uh, covering from from this area. And then there are these three like uh, pipes or inlet inside. So we insert the sand and uh, then there is we have to uh, 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 like monitor the temperature and uh, we try to minimize it until uh, less than 35 degrees centigrade. And the, the, we have the like uh, outer tap water, cooling water system because uh, it is the uh, it is the like a mixture of sand and water and when it is rotating at around 800 rpm then it it gets heated up so quickly so we need the tap or external tap water supply and this this uh, like setup is uh, like uh, torn by motor and in this way we mounted the disc and try to see the specimen like erosion in the specimen like uh, for 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 one run we, we need four specimen there are four four slots over here and there four specimen and the rpm was varied from 800 to 1100 because we need, we try to accelerate the process and uh, and for for information the like the specimen were made from aluminium because if we work on the steel or maybe turbine material then it will take ages to uh, to get the erosion so we opted for aluminium uh, so that uh, that we can get the at least best uh, fast result for qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis so aluminium was used and it is it is made for manufacturing also and then uh, uh, time for its run was 60 minutes and for like after 60 minutes we used to uh, close it down and then again wait for some time to uh, to, to see the sample then uh, wait for some time to cool it down and then again run it so in this way it it looks a simple experiment but it it takes a lot of time to do so this was done by the team of Kathmandu University so I I again uh, sincerely thanks for them so uh, experimental setup so this this way is the parameter that we are talking I am talking about the gap that the gap between the runner runner vein and the guide vein so at the for the reference case it was flat we didn't vary anything it was a flat specimen over here and for the second case we varied the gap from 2.5 mm to 3.5 mm and uh, for the test three we like uh, we fix the uh, maximum gap from uh, this case and uh, vary the vary the height difference. As I said earlier, because the runner vane and the guide vane are, they are in the different height during installation. So we, we try to play with that height or what happens if the height, uh, what happens and how does it varies upon the difference in the height. So that was our our uh, th way of thinking. And for the another case, it was like on the negative side, like if it is increased in this side, then on the other or for the other case, it is increased the other side. So these were the cases we did experiments, and uh, we, we also had uh, like plan to 
vary this radius or fillet radius also but it was not uh, so the time was uh, the constant to complete those experiments so i have only done varying the uh, gap and the height so and uh, the two two like there were two reference samples always there and there were only the two uh, samples with varying the these parameters because f we, we try to keep the reference sample always there so that it is easier to compare uh, and or the further re re redundancy of the experiment we try to keep it always there so that we can check uh, it is uh, working in the same way or the erosion is uh, pattern is behaving in the same way so these two were fixed over there and these of course these were the new sample each time but these are the same samples and these two samples were only varied during all of our experiments. So if we go to the results like uh, this is the slot with the same height and this is the slot with this height difference. You can see the uh, like difference in the uh, erosion pattern like here is there is shown like scale type of erosion all the way around if the flow direction is in this way and this is for the maximum uh, like slot I was discussing earlier. And uh, as uh, like as the slight di uh, height difference is observed, then there is like distinct uh, uh, recirculation area over here. I think it is a recirculation area, and, uh, and the, there is the another type of erosion phenomena going on over here. And there is like second here. It is almost similar type, but uh, like there are two distinct type distinct type of erosion zone with the high difference. And the erosion was progressed from like uh, 800, 900 to 1100. In this way, it was progressed. So uh this is just the quality qualitative pictures to see how erosion is uh, uh, like uh, how the material is uh, eroding uh, due to the increase in the like rotation rotational factor and increase in the time so this was the uh, sample reference and uh, this was the eroded sample after adding slots so like just we are trying to correlate with actual turbine this picture i had seen uh, shown earlier also so like uh, this reason or the earlier researchers claim that uh, this all reasons is due to the leakage vortex the hypothesis might be correct in some way like where the leakage vortex is directly like in this area it might be correct but uh, in this area i think the the water escaping the sediment uh, the water contained sediment escaping from this area is the circumferential area and uh, then uh, that is the main reason uh, for the erosion in those areas and uh, uh, yeah, this was the runner uh, obtained from Kali Gandaki, uh, Kali Gandaki Hydro Power Project from Nepal. So uh, we are trying to correlate this type of phenomena with the real turbine. So, and if we go to the results, like uh, some results um, from uh, varying the RPM from 800 to 1100 RPM, of course, the with the eddy, with the uh, like increase of the slot width, then uh, the erosion is uh, increasing linearly. So as you can see for 800 RPM to 1100 RPM for 2.5 mm slot width and uh, the maximum is for because we have varied this was due to the constraints of the time we could have gone further also. But uh, normally uh, the, the case I'm working uh, the reference case I'm working it has the difference of around uh, 2.7 or something so and this was the uh, like uh, um, slot we used for our experiments so this is the weight loss and it was calculated by and we took the weight uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the experiment and after after uh, after the experiment we do and then normalize it and then get the weight loss so in this way uh, it was calculated and similarly for the uh, like uh, height difference as you can see like if this is for the zero height difference that is for only for the slot and uh, uh, this is for this is uh, like for the direction of flow and uh, if we like check uh, the 800 rpm then there is not that much difference but as the rpm increases then there is the like uh, like uh, a certain increase in sudden increase in the uh, erosion uh, like a material loss so that is erosion so if we if we follow like uh, mm -hmm. It is 11 and yeah for 1000 RPM and then for 1100 RPM it has been the erosion has been like in the um, uh, it, it has been extended it has been increased in the exponential way so so the for the, comparing 800 to 1100 there is a huge like difference and so uh, as you can say like if uh, the, uh, the flow like if the runner runner vein is slightly higher than the guide vein then uh, the way we are using now 
then there is the less I, I could not go like behind this. I I hope I can I could have done this also uh, so that we can see the complete picture because it is coming in this way. So I want to see how it will go in in like reducing from this also, uh, but it has not been done. So but from this uh, like uh, uh, graph, we can inf in we, we can have inference that as the velocity increases like from uh, changes from 800 to 900, then the it, it the erosion has been uh, like uh, increased exponentially. So so this is so uh, uh, so this is the uh, so I think this is yeah this is for our case yeah yeah so now proposed model so is erosion uh, erosion factor this is the erosion rate so uh, we have come up with a preliminary model like uh, erosion is obviously I told like it depends upon the velocity and uh, the size of the size factor and shape factor, concentration factor, time factor, and slot with those experiments I did with height and slot with, and I think the radius is also important in this, but I couldn't do the experiment. Now, uh, I haven't put the e equal sign, it is equivalent. So now now my my uh, like uh, focus will be like, I want to find some time, time, some factor constant for this so that we can come up with the final model while I defend my PhD. So the, these are the factors I think that can contribute or that that are the main uh, uh, player behind the erosion. So this key, size, shape, concentration, these are the constant that can be obtained from the site, like uh, what type of size or shape or concentration. And time, of course, is the like uh, operating time. And these these three factors are also very important, which where the research has not been done yet. So I, on at the end of my PhD, I hope to come up with some factor and uh, to modify this equation and uh, come come up with conclusion. So, for the conclusion, I I can say like uh, yeah, as you, as I said earlier, a large portion of the old undeveloped hydropower market have high erosion and which represents a large untapped market. And of course, the geometry of the Francis Turn wire influence the extent of sediment erosion. As I said, like we can pl we have played with like various design of guide vein, a runner, and uh, now there there is the still the 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 reason where we can play so that uh, we can optimize that area and still there is uh, like uh, 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 we can play with that area and optimize the overall runner in the overall uh, runner for the sediment uh, laden projects so a simplified uh, experimental setup can predict the flow field uh, inside the clearance region between stationary and rotary caps and the research can further be extended to the labyrinth seal in francis turbine for our scenario of sediment because as i said earlier because the labyrinth seal they are designed in a certain way and there is also still some erosion and if you can uh, take take account of those factors also then we can get the complete picture of like from how to make from like if we say i'm not talking about uh, steven but from guide vein and those covers and uh, runner and all that there will be the complete uh, like uh, wholesome picture of uh, how the sediment is uh, eroding the turbine what can we do to minimize those ex uh, those uh, like problems in in such areas so thank you for your uh, attention uh, and uh, uh, if you have any like uh, comments or any questions regarding my presentation please feel free to ask i'll try to answer them yeah Thank you very much for your presentation, Akaria. That was very interesting and a very nice trip to virtual trip to Nepal as well. And uh, um, seeing the issues which uh, are being dealt with there, which uh, are too much small case represented in Norway. Yeah. Um, yeah, we as uh, I'm a civil engineer, so we as civil engineers, we always try to design the head race works in a way that we limit the amount of sediment coming yeah. to the turbines as much as possible. But uh, yeah. there are technical and uh, economical limits on uh, what can be done. I so uh, it's not possible to stop everything. I hope we will get some questions to the chat. I've seen that we have as well quite a few mechanical engineers with us today. While we wait for questions, what uh, do you think the um, the outcome of your research, the proposed model, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be uh, then used by uh, by turbine producers, I would think, to have a look at their design and perhaps reconsider or optimize <laughs> how they how they form the Francis turbines for areas which are heavily loaded with uh, sediments? Yeah, I 
I have like I agree uh, like uh, if uh, there will be some like uh, because we haven't thought that way like uh, the gap is playing and is also the one of the reason for the erosion like around the circumferential area. So if we can uh, like uh, work on that or try to I think it might be like um, two days more work in a workshop for the uh, like runner for that that much precision but you need the you need the tolerance you need the tolerance but if we can optimize that gap how to install it and then that is also there might be also uh, that might be also the another reason that we can decrease the erosion in the overall runner so maybe if we can verify this uh, like with other parameters and if we can take uh, like one experimental setup in a small like uh, running hydro power or maybe somewhere else then that might be beneficial i think yeah because it is, uh, I, as I said earlier, it is the like huge untapped market of erosion, and so the still we have the market. So then, then it needed to be researched more, and then for the final installation, yeah, I think I am hopeful that uh, it might be carried away. My research can might be carried away, and uh, we can come up with like final thing so that it can be adapted in the real case scenario. Thank you. Uh, there's a guy who has raised hand. Uh, I'll allow his yeah. microphone perhaps yeah. he can uh... yeah go it is muted i think yeah if you can uh, write the questions to the chat that's going to be better we have one question here for uh, from uh, Thais Pedersen, what kind of material was used in the experiment? Have you also tested with coating? No, but for now we, we use, as I said, because we have to accelerate the erosion in that small setup. So we use aluminium for this case. Uh, we, ha we have not coated like earlier. The, uh, we are planning to uh, like uh, the, the material uh, material uh, yeah, like uh, research is missing in this. Uh, but m my logic was that uh, rather than the material, we are just trying to see the geometry, how it is affecting. So for the acceleration of the process, we used the aluminum, but uh, it is not the real case scenario. So we can go to the like coating or maybe with the uh, real material of the turbine also. If we have the like the dedicated setup and the, those type of projects that we can go with it to make it real case scenario also. Yeah, but for now it is aluminum only. Philip, you are muted, I think. Uh, yes, I was muted. Go, I made you a presenter. Maybe you can try to say oh, okay. something now and unmute your microphone. I haven't seen uh, any question from. Yes, OK. Uh, he wonders how yes. to test okay. exact velocity in your equation. Yeah, can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, OK, 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 thank you, thank you, Philip. I wonder in your uh, presentation is as uh, slide 21, you okay. want to get the new erosion models based on many factors. Uh, yes, yes, this one. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you get the exact velocity? I mean, the, by the experimental. Uh, in uh, IDA, uh, I don't think you, you can get the exact velocity of particles. So what's the mean the velocity here? Uh, it is like uh, I will. Uh, it is like I am discussing about the peripheral velocity. If we have the RPM and the diameter of the uh, like disk, we can uh, we can relate to the peripheral velocity. So that that is the velocity I am talking about. Uh, okay. Uh, another question is uh, uh, the K size, shape, and maybe a slot wise factor. I think uh, uh, this maybe has some collisions. It's not uh, independent factors. So how yeah, do yeah. we divide it into different? Yeah, that is the very uh, nice question. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, there is a, it is the combination of such many factors. So one factor is dependent upon the another again. So it is a quite long like iteration or something. But uh, uh, still, like uh, uh, I have not thought that way. Maybe until my uh, like defense, I I should think in that way. Like uh, I am like now treating each factor as an independent factor, but. Uh, they, they, some factors are related with other factors, so you are right. Go, yeah. I will think in that way also, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. That's all. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Philip. That's all good. We have uh, another question from Seris Toxet. Uh, thank you for a nice presentation. If you should interpret your results and guess more, how would you think the future sediment optimal Francis turbine would look like? 
and uh, can remember indicate it without guide veins. Uh, if you could interpret your results and guess more, how would you think the future sediment optimal from return would look like? Remembering indicator with our, yeah, guide vein. Without guide vein, also like there, there, there was some uh, like uh, there were some in uh, researches, not researches, but there were some like discussions going on without guide veins. Also for that, they need to extend the uh, like uh, stay vein and which can act as the guide vein also. Um, but that might be also one prospect. But uh, like there, there have been uh, researches going on with variable speed turbine also. So we can, if we can, uh, like. Uh, uh, combine the variable speed and sediment erosion together, then there might be another possibility also. So, but uh, but for now, my my work was that existing turbines. Then what what can we do in the existing turbines? But for the future, there are like like possibility of guide vein less turbine also. I don't know. There there has been some discussion going on. I haven't looked in that way. But uh, yes, of course, Olegonar dialogue has also uh, like talked many times that there is the possibility of those types of setup also. Yeah. Uh, then if I I hope it uh, answered your question, Terry. There's another one from Magnus Klomnes. Will you consider the entry angle and relative motion stator to roadrun in further studies capable of causing more complex helical flow patterns? Entry angle and yeah, that is that is the important yeah, because of until now like uh, I have only worked in like a round uh, like RD as a rotating disks only yeah so. We, we might not have the control of those like entry angle and those things. We are just assuming like uh, it is hitting the way it hits in the turbine. So uh, that, that these are the factors we should uh, we should be focused upon. Maybe if in the from the experiment, if it is difficult, then we can work on the numerical side in that uh, setup itself. So um, my uh, like the extension of this uh, PhD will be also more into the verifying, validating the RDA itself, yeah, because we are like rotating the sand and water in the disk and we are trying to emulate like it is emulating the uh, turbine, but still it needs to be validated uh, from a CFD or other codes. So yeah, that is also the factor we should uh, consider in further studies. I agree with that, yeah. Yes. Um. See, Mamata Rijal raised uh, his or her hand, but uh, didn't write any question to the chat. Mamata, are you there? No. Is my voice audible? Sorry, yeah, yeah, now I can hear you, yeah. Hello, first of all, thank you so much, sir, for giving such a wonderful presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, can we control the erosion in labyrinth cells if we could uh, control the flow that is containing with the sediment flowing from the sidewall clearance and some insight into it? Yeah, yeah, for the labyrinth seal that uh, I mentioned briefly, I think like uh, there ha there is a, there is some possibility to reduce the erosion in those areas also like there there was one patent earlier like uh, if we can uh, uh, direct the clean water or we can inject the jet uh, in those labyrinth area and if we can flush the those areas then uh, erosion can be uh, like reduced uh, much significantly there is one patent from Oligunar himself so that need to be explored like I haven't touched that uh, that way but uh, um, that field, but uh, I believe that uh, that can be tested and uh, that can be proved. So there is the possibility. Yes, uh, there is the possibility to reduce the erosion in that area. Obviously. Thank you, sir. Then I think we exhausted the list of questions, um, and it's almost nine o'clock. Yeah. I want to thank you, Akaria, for uh, your presentation and uh, for the question answer session at the end now. And thank you, uh, good luck with the last stage of your PhD. And thank you very much. Else. Have a nice rest of the week and hopefully see you next month. Yeah. Yeah. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.